growing a, a, a grain. It's our most important food. It's the most. In terms of how many people get fed by it. And it needs a tremendous amount of water. Water, and it needs the right temperature. And the right temperature. So temperature is changing, and water is becoming much, much more problematic. Either not falling on rain-fed rice, or the sources for the irrigation water for, for paddy rice are bo both threatened by climate change. It's, it's not a pretty picture, but if you, you know, you can drink a lot and make the internal environment in pretty good shape while the external goes down the drain. So there are things people can do. Well, don't we have a lot of coal? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well uh, again, of course, it, it, the United States is absolutely insane. It's talking about drilling for more oil. It invaded Afghanistan, uh, uh, Pak uh, Excuse Iraq. Me? Iraq. Iraq, yeah, Iraq. Yeah. We're between Iraq and a hard place. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the, uh, we invaded them to get their oil. It's the second largest uh, known reserves of oil on the planet. Uh, we invaded Afghanistan to guarantee gas pipelines. Burning fossil fuels is, ins <clears throat> is insane. That's what's driving the climate change. We know absolutely that it's anthropogenic. That is, that the climate change is being driven by human beings primarily by burning fossil fuels and deforestation. And here we are, invading Iraq was like if we were hungry, invading Iraq to get their supply of cyanide so we could eat it. In other words, <laughs> we're, we're going after oil and coal that we just should not be burning. Uh, it's nutty, but again. All right. Now, it seems to me energy and water are, are connected. Tightly. Tightly. And... You know, of course. Coal. You ever look at a nuclear power plant? What do you think that great big thing that comes up? It's a cooling tower. It's a yeah. cooling tower. And it needs a supply of water. Okay. Now, I have a question about, I believe, California and EPA and, and other agencies have granted San Diego the right to build a desalination plant because, you know, it's, it's a realization that... Short of water. Need. However, I haven't seen how they're going to power this plant. This, uh, you need tremendous, as you know, a tremendous amount of power. You need a, like a PG&E or a Con Edison plant. To, to, to make even the kinds of water you need to, to give people drinking water. Right. But, but, but again, what's totally missed in this, look at the water situation in California. Where does our water go? Everybody says, ah, put a brick in your toilet tank. Put a brick in your toilet tank or have a low flow faucet in your house doesn't make any difference at all to the water situation. 90% of the water goes to agriculture. Another 5% roughly goes to industry. And if you look at the 5% right. coming to your homes, much of it goes onto your lawn. I mean, it's oh. nutty. Okay, so for the agriculture to... to you're not going to have ag water out of desalinization unless you're going to pay $50 a pound for uh, rice. Okay, so I'm with you on all of those points, and you made a lot of good ones, but I'd like to go back to the desalination. Sorry. We need a big energy plant to clean the water, to make it usable for something. I haven't heard what kind of plant California yeah. and the government is going to It's going to be yeah. a coal firing plant? I, I don't know. If they were smart, they would try and do it with solar, but there are lots of issues of how you deploy solar, and I would say desalinization is, would not be the top one. Our, our, unfortunately, we, we've made huge mistakes in designing our country. We haven't designed at all for resilience. So. And you can see this every time three states go out because you have a, a bird flies into a power line. One of the best things to do with solar is do solar electric and turn every roof uh, in the country into a solar collector. And then, for example, if we have the kind of solar storm that's occurred about every 100, 150 years in the past, we haven't had one since we've had a big electrical network. That network makes a huge antenna that if we have another solar storm would blow out every transformer in the United States. You blow out every transformer in the United States and virtually everybody in the United States dies. And we have not even thought about that in terms of our, uh, how we handle our electrical grid. Okay, so the, the, trans the transformers, these, these are these big things that convert DC into AC, I and think. Uh, uh, just, yeah, right. Okay. But you see, if you get rid of them, there's no way to make more because you need electricity to make more. There's no way right. to pump gas, so you can't run any automobiles or airplanes. Uh, and so you're just out of business because everybody's starved. You, you can't get the food to the people. Okay, and uh, a way around that is you're suggesting everybody put some kind of solar device. There are many on. possible ways around it, but we're not even thinking about it. When we 
rebuild our infrastructure, we should be thinking really hard about how we become more resilient to dealing with these possible horrendous environmental problems. Yeah, on the environmental problem, I'd like to go back to San Diego for a moment again. Coming out of the desalination plan is good water, okay? But they throw 50%, I believe, back into the ocean, and that has a impact on maybe biodiversity, yeah, it will, have a, it will have an impact, although compared to some of the other things we do to get water, the impacts are... Pr Listen, there's no free lunch in this, certainly, when you already are vastly overpopulated, vastly overconsuming, and vastly stupid like our Congress, uh, there's nothing you can do that's not going to carry right. a cost. But the things you just mentioned, it's hard to change stupidity and all of that. But I have a question. Uh, you are one of the big stewards, stewards <laughs> of of the environment. You know, it, well, that's we clear. try, but I've failed, as have my colleagues. It's a big challenge. Yeah, big challenge, haven't met it. Okay, so there's gonna be environmental groups who are gonna, uh, down in San Diego, that are going to try to prohibit the discharge of brine, I guess it is, and brine, other yeah. things. It's, it's the salt that's left when you desalinate water. And, and they're gonna be worried about the seals, etc. And they're gonna call upon the Endangered Environmental Act which, correct me now, is, is the pillar. Endangered Species, uh, there are a series of them. The Endangered Species Act is what they probably would call on to try and protect whichever endangered species is nearest to the brine outflow. All right, so calling on that law can slow significantly and maybe even completely halt, let's say, the use of a, uh, the, the building of desalination plants, which we need, as well as solar energy. How, what do we have to do with the Endangered Species Act to allow us to move forward to an environment where we harm all the plants and at the same time harness new I, energy I, sources? I, I hate to tell you. The Endangered Species Act and things like that just aren't going to do the job. The things that we have to do as the United States, which we won't do probably, is to set a standard. First of all, to recognize that we're already vastly overpopulated, and to the president get up and say, patriotic Americans stop it, two children, ideally just one, get our birth rate way down and start declining. No one has ever raised even a semi-sane reason why there ought to be more than 140 million Americans alive at one time, and we now have over 300 million Americans. Okay. And, all right, so what, that's one. Second, you got to change our consumption patterns. All right. you got to convert automobiles only into something that teenagers make love in, not a way to commute and so on. And that's another thing. And then we got to change our governance. Okay. Now, you said a pre U.S. president has to stand up and ask for more effective family planning. However, there's no one who probably could get elected or have the support of the Congress and the Senate who Encourage is that's why I said plans. we're not going to. That's why I said we're not going to do it. We need we need a president with more guts than any president is ever going to have. But it's it's more guts than a president. He must have a political, powerful, almost like a dictator in, in a way. He must have both parties in his camp, and he has to get all. He okay. has to have a population that demands it. And how do you get a population that demands it? All you have to do is watch the so-called debate over health care to see that the special interests are easily able, with clever lies and wonderful propaganda, uh, to convince people that taxes are wrong, that uh, taking people who are sick and giving them government care is wrong. Uh, they, 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 you got to look at the right wing. They've been extremely successful in convincing people that taxes are ba and government are basically evil as we get larger and larger and larger and need more and more government because of it. Okay, and, and do you see us co-oping uh, the right to life, protecting uh, the unborn? Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, I, I agree with Bill Clinton there. We want to make abortion very safe and very rare. And the way to do that is to make every single person who is, is sexually active have full access to excellent contraception. One of the reasons we don't have excellent contraception, particularly for men, uh, is that our laws are such that contraceptives are difficult for drug, drug companies to develop because there's too many legal liabilities that go along with them. Look, we're a whole bunch of scholars are getting together with a thing we call the Millennium